morning. Thanks for joining us in worship today. First thing we're going to do this morning is going to sing happy birthday to all of the July birthdays. So please join with us. Welcome to worship this morning. I want to thank everybody who's here to help us this morning in worship. Uh, we hope that you are healthy and well at home, and we're glad that you're joining us here this morning. A couple of announcements. Uh, just wanted to let you know that the funeral service for Betty Stewart will be this Saturday. It'll be a private family service uh, interment here at Calvary's Memorial Garden, so please pray for Betty's family during this time. Also, uh, we want to pass along the sad news of Muriel Stoops passing away. Uh, Muriel was uh, a longtime volunteer at the thrift shop, so pray for her family as well. Uh, we want to uh, uh, welcome into the world the birth of a new child, Zach and Lauren Rossica, members at Covenant, uh, and they have a baby girl, Sydney Grace, who was born July 14th, so that's exciting. Um, also, uh, if you're available this evening, we will have sunset meditation at 8 p.m. at Linden Bank, and uh, we have prayers each Wednesday on Zoom at 7 p.m., and you're welcome to join us then. Uh, so to begin, uh, as we have been doing, is uh, uh, taking a moment to pause in prayer for the great needs around the world. Uh, we pray for uh, those who have lost their life and their families who are grieving. Uh, we want to remember in our prayers this morning health care workers who are overwhelmed in hospitals that are overflowing with COVID patients. Uh, so we want to pray for them as well. So let's spend a moment in silence remembering uh, all those who are in great need this day. So let's take a moment in silent prayer. Eternal God, you have called us to be members of one body. Join us with those who in all times and places have praised your name, that with one heart and mind we may show the unity of your people and bring honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join us on uh, the first hymn. It's number 710. <laughs>
Good morning. Our scripture reading this morning is Romans chapter 8, verses 12 to 22. This is from a letter Paul sent to the church in Rome. Those people were Gentiles. They were non-Jews. And he was using the analogy of adoption, which would have been very clear to them because both Greek and Roman law conferred all rights and privileges to adopted heirs, the same as biological heirs. And so this is what Paul had to say. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God for the creation was subjective to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will conclude our prayer this morning with the Lord's Prayer, but we have a special treat because we have Davy with us and he is going to sing the Lord's Prayer at the conclusion. So if you want to hum along or sing along in your mind, that's great but we will have the Lord's Prayer sung by our own Dave. Lord, you are the eternal and almighty God, yet because of the spirit of adoption, we can call you Father, or more intimately, Daddy or Papa. We are your children. What a glorious thought. But we don't always take comfort in that fact, or the fact that nothing takes you by surprise that you are in control and you will know the end from the beginning. We fret and grumble and complain. So much is beyond our control <clears throat> and our understanding. So much seems horribly wrong. We see fierce divisiveness, discontent, floods and storms, frustration, depression, death, craziness, uncertainty. We miss life as it used to be. We miss family and friends activities, routines, worshiping together in person, recreation, normalcy, and there is no end in sight to the stress and the weird stuff going on. Loved ones are ill or dying and we can't visit them. Kids can't play together. We can't come and go as we please. We can't be together most of the time. Seen from that perspective, life is not as we wish it to be. And so we lose hope, we lose faith, and we grumble. Help us, Lord, to focus on the blessings we so easily take for granted, for clean, cold water on a hot day, for the beauty around us, for the joy of our church village and other family and friends. May we remember that we are all one, that just as we can't handpick our own biological brothers and sisters, so we are given our brothers and sisters in Christ by you. Help us to build bridges instead of walls, to seek to unite and help rather than to divide and attack. 
where we go, may we be your servants showing your love, helping, caring for others, to feed the hungry, to comfort the lonely, and to reach out. Lord, Papa, we pray generally for our sad world, for our healthcare workers and others who work under so much pressure for months on end without relief, for those who are ill or isolated and lonely, for those who have no job, no income, and lots of worries, or who have jobs but don't feel safe going back to work. We pray for the bored, the fearful, the disenchanted. Lord, grant us your peace. We pray specifically for those we know by name, <clears throat> for families mourning the loss of Carol Laporte, Muriel Stoops, and Betty Stewart, for new mom Lauren Rossica and Lauren and Sarah Wood, who is expecting her new baby very soon, for those whose health is not top-notch, like Jim Bender, Michael Cox, Jean and Marlene as they fight their cancers. And now, Lord, we conclude with the Lord's Prayer.
I'd like you to get comfortable and close your eyes and take a deep breath in, breathing in spirit and a deep breath out. God created us to have the experience of the spirit in our minds and in our bodies. You may open your eyes. This is the source of genuine eternal happiness, better than any other experience of happiness we might find. When we put on the mind of Christ, when the Spirit fills our thoughts and our bodies, we no longer have any fear. We live fully in the timeless, eternal, present moment knowing our purpose in life, which is to love God and love our neighbor. Romans 8 is one of the best chapters in the New Testament, which gives us tremendous hope. I'd encourage you to read this chapter over and over again. There's so much in there worth thinking about. Romans 8.15 says, You have not received a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear but you have received a spirit of adoption. And Dorothy, it was great to hear your uh, talk about adoption in Jesus' times. And this morning, I just want to offer a story. Sometimes the best theology is just a good story. Pastor Stacy Stalls tells this story about adoption. He says, 31 years ago, my wife Ginger and I were in the process of completing the home study process for the adoption of our first child. We had all the interviews. The social worker had come to visit our home. It was, by the way, only one of three times in my adult life that I cleaned the oven. I don't know why I thought our caseworker would be checking to see if the oven was clean, but that is what the words home study conjured up in my mind. The final interviews had come. These were to be with Ginger and me separately. I assume the reason for that is that if one of us had not really wanted to go through with the adoption, we could bring a halt to the process without having to reveal the complete truth to our spouse. In our case, we were both as committed and anxious in every sense as ever. I was to have my interview first, and I promised to stop by at a payphone, this was before the days of cell phones, to call Ginger and tell her what the social worker had asked on my way back to the office, which I did. Ginger, in turn, was to call me when her interview, scheduled later in the afternoon, was complete. Well, the time of Ginger's interview came and went. There was no call. I waited and waited. No word. I began to get concerned. My anxieties ran rampant. I feared that the social worker had completed Ginger's interview and said something like, Ginger would make a wonderful parent, but that I was a complete bozo who had tried to trick her into thinking we had a clean oven. I imagined Ginger crying because of the disappointment and too upset to call me. Finally, about 5.30, Ginger arrived at my office door, and she had red, puffy eyes. She had clearly been crying, 
and I thought my worst fears were confirmed. Instead, however, she stepped in and said, you have a son. And she pulled out a picture of a baby boy. We know him as Andrew. At that point, I started to cry. It was all I could do. People from the office came in to see if I was all right. It was very embarrassing. Turns out the social worker's last question to Ginger, as it had been to me, was, so are you ready for a baby? When Ginger responded yes, the social worker had said, good, because I have a referral for you, at which point she pulled out a file and a picture. Ginger had, of course, met this news with tears of joy. And in all the excitement, she couldn't remember exactly how to get to my office. She'd been driving around a long time, hoping to recognize something and be able to find the way. Now here's the rest of the story. Ginger is the emotional one in our family. She could cry at the drop of a hat, happy or sad made no difference, tears were appropriate for any occasion. Not so for me. Up until that point in our lives together, Pastor Stahl said I had never cried, not once. I didn't think I had it in me. But when the news of Andrew came, the floodgates broke open. I started to cry, and try as I might, I couldn't stop. I would think I had myself under control. We would try to call somebody to tell the news. I would be prepared to speak, but when somebody answered the phone, I would start again and I'd have to hand the phone to Ginger. I was reduced to nothing but tears. People come to the United States from far away places for many reasons. Some come to escape persecution. Others come in search of freedom. Many come in search of a better life. Some are oppressed. Some are displaced by war. Our son Andrew, and later his brother Matthew, came to complete a family. Romans 8.15, you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. This truth that we have been adopted by God as his children is the most glorious truth in all of human history. Today, this moment, I hope you realize that you are one of God's beautiful children. You have been adopted into God's family. There is nothing more to fear. There is no more need to be anxious about tomorrow. There is nothing in heaven or on earth or under earth that will ever take this away from you. You are the beloved child of the Almighty. And rest assured, you are cared for and loved by the maker of the universe. And in fact, you have the presence of the Almighty, the Spirit, with you at all times. But you may not know this because you are still living under the spirit of slavery, falling back into fear. But you can, in fact, at any moment, receive the spirit of adoption. And you can know for sure, by your own direct experience, that you are a precious child of God, forever. Amen. So it says here on the back of the bulletin, our program, thankful, grateful, blessed. Blessed is, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. <laughs>
Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak and help the suffering. Honor everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.